successful people who are using this information in their real life. That's how books work. The books that we read, that we were given, use these techniques. They're not manuals per se, but they're stories of real people, members of the societies, with real accurate descriptions of their daily life and them acting out these principles and techniques in their daily life. Does this make sense? This is why I tell you the first concept was who do you listen to? When you start reading books about mythical characters, you're screwing yourself up. Because now you're mimicking and modeling yourself after the short order cook when you want to learn how to cook a souffle. Because these are not real people. If there was a simple thing for you to do, if you wanted to be outrageously successful, it'd be go and get autobiographies and biographies of people who have what you want. If you want to be a chef, read the autobiographies and biographies of great chefs. If you want to be a musician, read the biographies and autobiographies of great musicians. Because that's who you have to mimic and model yourself after. These are the people that have developed the habits and neural pathways in their brain, who've reached levels of unconscious competence that you should be modeling yourself. And since you can't meet them because they're dead, you can still associate with them now pay attention, listen to what I'm saying. You can still associate with them even though they're dead through books. Leaders are always readers. Books are magic. Books are powerful. Books allow our brains and our imaginations to be utilized to create images, sights, sounds, and smells through the power of our imagination in our brain, which creates neural pathways even faster than physical observation with our eyes. Isn't this interesting? And some of you wonder why we had to read books when we were kids. And some of you wonder why books are being pushed away by the powerful parasitical elite class. Because the power of books is known. The power of books is known. So we associate and observe. So, you're here and getting to the unconscious competence level, utilizing the fundamentals, the four basics. Who do you listen to? Teachability index. Training balance scale. And the four steps of learning information. This is the foundation. When we worked with our mentors, as I mentioned, in some cases our mentors would give us books where we would begin to learn these concepts. And the books that we were given had emphasis on one of these four characteristics. Was the emphasis of the story, was the observations I was getting from the book focusing me on teachability index or training balance scale or the four steps or who do I listen to? It was given so that I would continue to focus on these four fundamentals. And obviously I was given books because there are thousands and thousands and thousands of these books. We were given books based on our need and our weakness. But every book always covered all of them with emphasis on one over the other. At the end of this class, you're going to be given books not from the societies because they are 
unavailable to you for multiple reasons. We couldn't have, we couldn't grab them from the libraries and taken them with us. By the way, where are these libraries? A lot of people ask. And now that's what you're going to say, right? Yeah, where are the libraries? Right? Now the libraries are in people's homes. They're not in the Skull and Bones building. They're not in the Illuminati building. They're not in the Brotherhood building. They're not in the Freemason buildings. No. This information, as I mentioned, has passed on through generations, through families, through people. And these books and libraries are actually physically in homes around the world. That's where the information is. And that's why it can't be taken out. So you're going to get the second best. You're going to get a list of other books, which myself and my colleagues have read and come close. Come close. So we're going to give you many of these uh, tools when you leave. So we learned this information from, I mentioned, some lectures, some one-on-one -on -one conversations, books, and again by physically observing. So how would we do it in real life? Is the books were probably the main focus because that was something that we could do on our own. And then the physical observation because we knew what members of society were members of our societies. We could observe them and we were given access. Although in many cases not direct access, in some cases only indirect access through our mentors, our teachers, our sponsors. Every group called these individuals different things. Sometimes uh, one society calls your teacher the man, which is interesting because we use that a lot of minorities in America use that in a very defamatory way. And that's really where it came from, from the secret societies. As the person who has power over you, in effect. But we observed, we looked, we were taught that we had to observe. And how were we trained? When I was with my mentor, or if I was observing another member of the society, sometimes I get a phone call at two o'clock in the morning. Hello? Hey, did you see so-and-so today do his such and such thing? Yeah. What did you observe? Two o'clock in the morning I'm getting the phone call. This was part of the training. This was part of the teaching. That's a little bit of the advantage of having that one-on-one -on -one person. But for you, you have these CDs, which we didn't have, by the way, because none of the stuff was recorded. Heaven forbid the stuff would be leaked out. So you have an advantage that we didn't have. Myself and my colleagues are putting together these CDs for you, for those here in the room, obviously, because when you leave, I know you're not going to get it all. That's why you're getting the CDs. And for the people at home listening to the CDs, you can listen to it over and over and over and over again, and you're virtually going to have a catalog of CD material and books that you can use as your material, which will be incredibly powerful at learning this information, integrating it, and getting to unconscious competence. But why do I spend so much time again on this foundational material? I was with a Shaolin monk. Some people may have watched the uh, TV show, an American version of the show, actually an American series, TV series called Kung Fu back in the 70s with David Carradine. Kung Fu was about a Shaolin monk from the Shaolin Temple in China, which is a real place, thousands of years old. And this particular TV series was about David Carradine. His character was named Kwai Chang Kane. He was a Shaolin monk. A Shaolin monk at the time was a Buddhist monk who was trained in the martial arts of Kung Fu, Tai Chi, Qigong, Wu Su, and other martial arts. The Shaolin Temple was actually the birthplace of all martial arts in the world. The Shaolin monks, before they were martial artists, were peaceful meditating monks. Unfortunately, because they were peaceful meditating monks, 
Bandits would come in, beat up the monks, kill the monks, and steal from the monks. The monks got a little tired of this, so they decided to go out and find some warriors that they could hire to protect them. So they send out monks east, west, north, and south to find warriors who could defend the Shaolin Temple. When the monks returned, they brought back warriors from the east, west, north, and south, as far as India, Japan, and different provinces in China. Before this time, the warriors or the fighters around the world only were trained and were taught and knew of the fighting techniques of their particular region. So each one of these warriors that returned to the Shaolin Temple each had a unique and quite different fighting style. This was the first time in history where all these fighting styles, experts in these various fighting styles, got together and met each other and began to share their techniques with one another. And over the years, these monks began to integrate all the various styles together into one style which became known as Kung Fu. The monks also did something else that was unique. They observed animals like the tiger, the crane, the snake, the praying mantis, and they watched how these animals fought in the wild. And they took all of this knowledge and over the years developed a style of fighting which became the most feared and awesome and overpowering fighting style on the planet, the Shaolin Kung Fu. These styles were put together in forms so that the monks could practice their martial arts so they could defend themselves, but at the same time meditate. So they developed forms which was moving meditation. And this TV series about Kwai Cheng Kane was about this monk who left the temple and traveled throughout America and got into a bunch of fights and protected people and showed off his Kung Fu. The Shaolin Temple is a real place and I've always been intrigued by the Shaolin monks and their incredible ability. For the first time in history, the Chinese government allowed 35 of the monks to leave the temple and do a worldwide tour showing the world the abilities of the Shaolin fighting monks. Up until this time, no one really saw the Shaolin monks in action. It was all myth, it was all stories, it was all legend of what these monks could do. Well, when the monks traveled, the legend was nothing compared to just how awesome these monks' abilities were. The monks amazed everyone with their ability to move their chi energy and do phenomenal feats with their physical bodies that was mind-blowing to all that saw them. On the last day of the last city, the lead monk Shi Yunming decided to leave the temple, or actually not return to the temple, but leave the hotel, not return to the temple, because he was defecting and he wanted to teach the world these secrets for the first time in history. And for years he was on the run from the Chinese government, he was on the run from the immigration authorities in America and so forth. Well, I met this monk. I brought him to my home. He lived with me for a while. And when I first met him, his English was not very good, so I had a, a Chinese Kung Fu teacher with me to in, help interpret. So my first day, I, I said to my Chinese Kung Fu teacher friend who spoke English. I said, tell the monk that I want to learn the secrets of the Shaolin Temple. I want to learn the advanced stuff. And make sure you let the monk know that I have studied the martial arts for, for years and years, and I am very proficient in the martial arts, so 